protocols let us define contracts to which any conforming type must adhere. And extensions let us add functionality to existing types. What if we could extend protocols themselves? Well, one to know more because Swift supports exactly that using aptly named protocol extensions. We can extend a whole protocol to add real method implementations and any type conforming to that protocol will gain those method implementations. It also works for computed properties too. Let's start with a trivial example. It's very common to have condition checking code like this one here. Let guest is an array of Mario, Luigi, Peach. If guests dot is empty is equal to false, print guest count, guest dot count. Some people, not me, uh, prefer to use the Boolean not operator like this. If not guests dot is empty, print guest count, yada, yada, yada. And I'm really not a big fan of either of these approaches. I think they're both pretty poor. They just don't read naturally to me. If not some array dot is empty. That's not my brain works, right? We can fix this with a really simple implementation of an extension, adding functionality to array. We could say uh, up here, let's do it for our code. Extension, extension array var is not empty bool send back is empty is false like that. Now Xcode's playgrounds run their code from top sequentially down to bottom. So make sure you put your extension code up here at the top. In regular projects, this does not matter. With that in place, we can now rewrite our condition to say, if guests dot is not empty, which I think is significantly more readable. That works great for arrays. We just added is not empty as a computed property to arrays. But what about sets? What about dictionaries? Sure, we could have extension set is not empty. Extension dictionary is not empty. We could repeat ourselves again and again and again, but there's a better solution. Because array, set, dictionary, and more all conform to a built-in protocol called collection, through which you get functionality such as contains, sorted, reversed, and more. Now this is important because collections also what it requires is empty to exist. So if we write an extension on the collection protocol, we can still read is empty. We know it'll exist because it's required. And this means we can change our extension from being an array extension all the way up to collection. Let's extend collection directly. So all types of collections, sets, arrays, and dictionaries. And with that one change in place, we can now do the same thing for sets, dictionaries, and arrays, as well as any other types that can form the collection now and in the future. Now, believe it or not, this tiny extension exists in literally thousands of Swift projects because so many other people find is not empty easier to read. More importantly, by extending the protocol itself, we're adding functionality that would otherwise have to be done inside every individual struct. Array, set, dictionary, yada, 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 all of them. This is really powerful, and it leads to a technique Apple calls protocol-oriented programming, or POP for short. We can list some required methods in a protocol. You know, conforming types must add A, B, and C, but then add default implementations of those in a protocol extension. All conforming types will then gain access to those default implementations, or they can provide their own overrides if they need to. For example, if we had a protocol like this one here, protocol person, var name string get, and then func say hello. That means all types conforming to person, I know user, employee, and so forth, must have a name property and must have a say hello method. But we can also add a default implementation of say hello, like this, extension person, func say hello, print hi, I'm, string interpolation, name. 
And of course, we get name because we're inside the person protocol. We know name when it gets to the property. It must do. And now conforming types can add their own say hello method if they want to, but they don't have to. They can always rely on this default implementation provided here inside our protocol extension. And so we can make an employee class, uh, struct, employee, like this, and say it conforms the person with a name string, but no say hello method. Even though it's required by the protocol, it's not required inside here, because we'll get the default one in our protocol extension. And we can use it. We could say, uh, let Taylor equals an employee with the name of Taylor Swift, Taylor dot say hello, like this. Boom. Now Swift uses protocol extensions a lot. But honestly, you don't have to understand them in great detail just yet. You can build fantastic apps without even using a protocol extension. At this point, the main thing is you know they exist and that's enough.